Hi, I'm Emily. You're watching the fourth episode of Holding the Sticks, a hockey-themed fiber arts podcast. Welcome to my craft room here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. I missed you all last week when I didn't record, so I'm really happy to be back this week. I hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays if you celebrate other things. I know I enjoy celebrating solstice as well as Christmas. So I say the more you celebrate, the better this time of year. It's so dark outside. Today I have lit my candle again over here. And it is for Carolyn Call Shirley, who hosts the Girlfriends Knitting Podcast. I've lit that just to let her and her family know that they're in my thoughts and prayers. Um, Carolyn lost her father shortly before Christmas. So that is why my candle is lit today. I have just a couple of administrative things today. Um, actually, just one administrative thing today. I have applied for blip.tv, and um, that, if I am accepted, I will be able to get the podcast up on iTunes, and therefore, therefore you'll be able to download it on Downcast and other apps like that. So keep your fingers crossed. I should hear, hopefully by the end of the week, um, with the holiday, it's a little, little bit of a longer wait than most of the time. I know several knitting podcasts have been denied lately, and um, so I'm a little worried. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, if, if I do get it, if I do get accepted at Blip, next week's episode should be on iTunes. And if I'm not accepted, I'll have to look into some other options. So, we'll just take it as it comes. <laughs> I have several thanks to give out today. Um, Y'all were really busy with the wrapping over the last couple of weeks. I was wrapped three times. If you're not familiar with what a wrap is, it is a random act of patterns. It was something started by Carrie Steinmetz before she passed away and the knitting community has taken that and run with it. So I received three wraps over the last two weeks and I'm so excited about all of them and I'm so thankful. Um, the first one I received was a pattern called Mork. It's for a beautiful cabled sweater. I'm going to put a picture in right here. And that is designed by Julia Farwell Clay. The photo I just showed you is one of Julia's photos and I did ask for her permission to use that. Um, Heather219 on Ravelry gifted that pattern to me. Thank you so much, Heather. I have actually, I'm so excited about this one. I've actually already ordered the yarn for it. And it will be here sometime this week, I hope. <laughs> of course, I have so many other projects um, I'm trying to finish up and things. It's probably a good thing that um, it didn't come right away. Because <laughs> I'll want to cast that on as soon as I can. And the next pattern I received was PB the Polar Bear. And that's by Snowden Becker. I love this pattern. I have since the first time I saw it. It is the cutest little polar bear toy. And here's a picture of it. Those pictures were, um, one of them was from um, Snowden herself and from her project page and I have her permission of course. And the other one I wrote down over here, I'm unprepared, sorry about that. The other one was from Spinning Around or her name is Ulrike, I hope I'm saying that correctly, or Ulrike. Um, 
she is in Germany, I believe it was. So, um, but she is spinning around on Ravelry. I thought hers was so cute. I wanted to put it in there too. <laughs> I've ordered the yarn for that as well. I decided since I'm a grown up and this toy is for me that I was going to get some uh, luxury yarn as a treat for myself to knit this with. So I got an Angora blend to make my little polar bear with. And one of the reasons I like polar bears so much is that um, the checkers mascot is a polar bear named Chubby. <laughs> so I love polar bears. I've liked them all, all the time anyway, but uh, the third pattern I received was Argonath by Susan Pandorf. And if y'all haven't seen this, here's a picture. And once again, I have to look and see whose picture that is because I wrote it down right here. This is a picture from Lee 67,000, L-E-A 67,000. She's in France, and I thought hers was just so beautiful, and she had that um, great view of uh, close up and further away. So I asked, of course, if I could use her photo, and she very graciously said yes. So I plan on casting this on, and it's going to be one that takes me a while. That's a lot of cables on that. Um, and Argonath is from um, The Lord of the Rings, if you're familiar with the movies. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Um, I don't know how in the world I haven't seen The Hobbit yet, but just haven't gotten around to it. That will happen soon. <laughs> anyway, so thank you all so much. And um, PB the Polar Bear was gifted to me by Franciscan Gypsy, Talia. And she hosts, co-hosts the Pens, Needles, and Hooks podcast. It used to be the Nurse with Needles podcast. And Argonath was gifted to me by Fluffy Dog Owner on Ravelry. Her name is Debbie. And again, um, Mork was gifted to me by Heather219 on Ravelry. So thank you all so much. Uh, that was very sweet. It's so much fun to open up your inbox and find surprises like that. Um, tomorrow I have plans of my own to participate in the, the wrapping, <laughs> so I'm excited. Alright, I wanted to mention that I'm really excited too because I won a prize on Sassy Pants Knitter on Silly Fru's podcast um, for her Hats for Grammy, and um, she gave me a little shout out, so thanks Silly Fru, Wendy, I really appreciate um, you just giving me a little shout out there. And also, I know that Polly from the Polly Knits podcast, he's um, Polly81 on Ravelry, he gave me a little shout out in his group over the past week. So thank you. I really appreciate it. I believe that is all I have for the administrative and introductory stuff. So let's get right into the first period. Okay, let's get into some first period action. First period is in the zone. I've gotten a little confused with my segment titles over the past <laughs> three weeks I've been podcasting, but the fiber arts section is called in the zone and it starts with developing play. Those are my works in progress. And within developing play, we'll have stick handling and spinorama. Today, we don't have any spinorama. Stick handling is whatever knitting or crocheting projects I have going on. And before I go any further, I just wanted to let you all know or point out to you that I'm wearing this little feather in my hair today um, just to celebrate for the new year. I've got myself all gussied up for the new year, <laughs> the last day of the old year rather. Thought I'd try and look a little bit festive, but I didn't want you all looking at the screen going, what in the world is that thing on her head? <laughs> It's just a little peacock feather. So now that that's out of the way, we'll get right into the stick handling. So I've got two projects in progress right now. The first one is one that you've seen a couple of weeks ago. It's been a couple of weeks since you've seen it. And that is, pardon me for leaning out there, my Fair Isle Mittens. By Peyton's. Now this is what the finished one looks like right here and then there's the front right there. Yay it fits. I worked a little bit on the second mitten 
which is right here. Got the strings all hanging off. <laughs> so that's as far as I've gotten on the second. I'm, I'm at the point now where I will be um, dividing off stitches for the thumb. So you know you always put it aside right when you get to one of those more complicated spots, at least I do. Because I'm just going along and I don't want to change what I'm doing so I'll have to get into that pretty quick so I don't let it sit for too much longer. Have a little deadline on those. I'm going to a checkers game next Sunday so I need to get those finished in time for that. Those are made with Red Heart Super Saver and some Vanish Choice. So that's just the yarn I had on hand. I'm using a size 6 needle. That's 4 millimeters. So um, usually my gauge works out just right with what needle is called for in the pattern and that was the case in this one as well. The other project I've been working on, excuse me once again, I have been working on a beekeeper's quilt. Now if y'all haven't seen the beekeeper's quilts, you should go look on Ravelry. I will show right here a picture. of my beekeeper's quilt in progress. None of my little hexagons are attached to each other yet, but I've kind of laid them out and um, that's, you just keep putting them together until you have a blanket as big as you want it and it's like a knitted quilt. So each little hexagon looks like this. Of course I'm using all kinds of different sock yarns, different scraps. Um, this one I don't know what this one was, <laughs> but the one I'm currently working on right here, where'd it go? Here it is. This is the one that is currently in progress. These are really quick little things to knit up, perfect travel knitting. This is made with Miss Babs Yummy Sock in the French Marigold colorway. Gorgeous color. I made a shawl with this. I'm sure you'll see me wear it on an episode eventually. It is so pretty, just the nicest orange, slightly variegated, just a tonal. And then I'm stuffing mine, you stuff each little hexi puff with whatever you want to stuff it with, but I am using some very rough <laughs> Icelandic wool that came with my spinning wheel. I have like three pounds of this, and I've spun some of it. Actually, I have some right here. It's coming out very rustic. It's not anything I would ever want to wear by my skin. In fact, I made a hot water bottle cozy with it. And um, I can't think of anything else I would ever make with the spun yarn. So I decided I would use it to stuff my hexi puffs. And I will have a super warm quilt when that is done. So there is that. I have put Nidaria on the bench. Um, Nidaria may actually be suspended until spring because it's been very, very busy at work. My hands have been tired and it's hard for me to manage that tiny little um, yarn, the lace yarn, when my hands are like this. It's much better for me to work with the larger needles and um, bigger yarn. And also, that will be a good project to do once the weather starts getting warmer when I don't want heavier yarns draped all over me. So. We'll see if work calms down a little bit. It may come off the bench a little earlier, or it may stay on the bench for quite a while. We'll see. I really want to finish it. It's going to be a beautiful shawl. So I have finished several projects. So in She Shoots, She Scores, I have three finished objects. Unfortunately, the first one I do not have with me here because um, Mom took it home with her. <laughs> The first one is Mom's Christmas stocking, and I made her a Hurricanes Christmas stocking, and here's a picture of it. I put it up outside her, the guest room door, Christmas Eve, and she came out the next morning and saw it. <laughs> I was so excited to get to be Santa's little helper. Me and Santa are like this, you know. <laughs> Although he didn't bring me what I wanted for Christmas, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We'll talk more about that later. <laughs> so 
So I finished the stocking and that was a, a knitted Christmas stocking by Joy Green. I modified that to knit it in a round and I used Red Heart Super Saver in three different colors, a red, white, and a black. And I used a size 8 needle for that. So um, mom really liked it and I was really glad. It matches other stockings I made for my nephews a couple of years ago. So I'm trying to make sure everybody in the family has these stockings. I still have a few more people to go, so if you are in my immediate family and are wondering, hey, where's my stockings? Just wait. You'll have stockings. <laughs> Don't worry. The other, or the next project that I finished is Fester the Whole Goat. That's the little stuffed goat I was knitting for my husband. He's over here. Come here, Fester. Fox, my husband, absolutely loves this guy. I put him in Fox's stocking. Here's a little picture. But he was so fiddly to make. I had to make, you know, each little horn and each little ear and a little, little goat tail. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> And then the body was done in two parts. There's a seam that goes up here and down and over each leg. So that was quite a lot of seaming. And of course I had to embroider the little, I don't know if you can see the little pink nose, and then I put the little beard on there. So yeah, it was one of those projects. And it was done on size 2 needles, and this is probably like a sport weight yarn, maybe DK. So it was kind of rough going on the hands because you want to knit a toy really close knit so that the stuffing won't show through. But yeah, I was kind of wanting to poke my eyes out with my knitting needles there for a while while I was knit making this, but the result, so worth it. <laughs> and Fox's reaction was so worth it too. He loves this guy. It's been like really hard to keep him from running off with the little goat, take him to work. And I said, just wait, I just have to show him on the podcast. <laughs> So that's Fester. He is knitted with all hand spun yarn. Um, the white is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Bear roving. And the dark color is some um, Icelandic that I spindle spun. So that's the horns and the little hoofs. And I did those on a size 2 needle. And I think I would probably knit another one of those because that's just too cute. <laughs> And the third thing that I finished, I am wearing today, that is my Crosswords at the Coffee House shawl by Carrie Steinmetz. Um, Fester was designed by Jenny Stacy. Sorry about that, y'all. I'm having some technical difficulties today, and my camera just cut off, so who knows. I have a third finished object in She Shoots, She Scores, and I am wearing it today. This is my Crosswords at the Coffee Shop by Carrie Steinmetz. I knitted it with some hand-spun merino from Frabjus Fibers. Hopefully I said that right. It's in the Redwood Forest colorway. I knitted it with size 8 needles. So I'm going to give it a little twirl here so you can see the back of it too. Let's see if I can. So you can see there. I love it. I love it. I love it. This was the first wrap pattern that I received and I was super excited to cast on. As soon as my Christmas knitting was finished, a couple of days before Christmas, I cast this on and um, knitted it when my mom was here and we were visiting. So of course I had to tink back a bunch and then re-knit and tink back and re-knit. I actually had to frog <laughs> one time. Mom had to look at it and see what in the world I had done. And it's not because it was a difficult pattern very well written pattern and very easy to do but uh, I was very distracted and we were having a good time just being together <laughs> mom and my husband and me so that is the last thing that I finished and I can't wait to wear it somewhere this is the first time I've put it on it actually finished blocking this morning so yay <laughs> all right that does it for the first period let's get into the second period and some training room action All right, everyone, are you ready to spend some time in the training room? I know I could use some extra time in the training room. <laughs> I 
the holidays mean lots of really good food and crazy schedules and I am just like everybody else the last couple of weeks I have not been really good with the fitness I've fitted in where I've been able to it's been less than I'm used to and less than I would like but I did the best I could so I guess my fitness tip for this week is fit it in where you can squeeze it in if you have to 15 minutes is better than nothing 10 minutes is better than nothing even getting on the floor and doing 25 push-ups or sit-ups is better than doing nothing. So that's my tip this week. Also remember, every day is a new day. Tomorrow I'm going to go out and if the weather holds, I'm going to run laps at the track at the school nearby. If the weather's bad, I'm going to get right back on that stationary bike. So tomorrow is a new day. Start over again. Things are calming down after the holidays. Schedule should be back to normal. So I have no excuses. <laughs> I hope I'm not a huge disappointment to y'all. <laughs> it happens to everyone, I think. So uh, the good news is that I have not gotten any larger and haven't gained any weight. So I know that's not the best indicator of things, but I think I've done okay anyway. Still, I can't continue to sit around because I miss running and I miss working out. I miss the way I feel after a good workout. So back at it tomorrow. All right. The other thing I wanted to talk about in today's training room is some frequently asked questions about massage. I've been seeing a lot of brand new clients, people who have never had massages before over the past couple of weeks because they got gift certificates for Christmas. So if you got a gift certificate for a massage for Christmas, or if you're thinking about coming in for your first massage, Hopefully this will be an informative little segment for you. I'm just going to focus on a couple of questions, maybe three questions today. If you have other questions for me, please feel free to put them in the thread on the Ravelry group so that I can answer them for you maybe in the next episode. So, one question that I hear most often when I tell people that I'm a massage therapist, people want to know, does it hurt? <laughs> well, it depends on the type of massage you're having. It also depends on what you are looking for in your session. There are many different kinds of massage. It's one of the reasons I love this field so much. I could never get bored because if I get bored with one type of massage, I can learn a different type of massage. So. What a lot of people are looking for is a relaxation massage. It's typically a Swedish massage in nature. And when I say Swedish massage, that means it's going to have a lot of long flowing strokes and some uh, what's called petrissage where they squeeze your muscles a little bit. And um, it's very uh, relaxing. It shouldn't hurt. <laughs> now all of this is relative. What I tell my clients is if it hurts so good, that's fine. Because you're going to feel that, you know, when I find a knot or something like that, you're going to feel that, oh, that hurts so good. But then I always tell my clients too, if you're laying there hoping it's over soon, that's too much pressure. We don't need to go there. I don't even need to go there with a deep tissue massage. Uh, as a massage therapist, I had around 700 hours of training in the United States, other countries have different requirements. Other states have different requirements for their massage therapists because licensure is done on a state-by-state -state basis. Um, licensure is required in most states in the United States and we all have different rules and different requirements for education. Usually it's around 700 to 1,000 hours of education required. I know some states have 1,200 hours required. In Canada, I understand that to be a massage therapist, you basically have to have a four-year degree. So I actually considered studying in Canada when I was going into, looking into beginning my career. But I decided not to go that route. Some things just don't work out. I would have loved it though. Canada, hockey, you know, <laughs> would have been perfect. <laughs> so, but as I was saying, having only 700 hours of classroom education plus uh, about 12 hours of continuing education each year, I don't feel like I have the amount of training necessary to bring a person beyond a certain level of pain. 
your body gives you pain, pain signals for a reason. Your body is telling you something hurts because it's trying to protect you. And it's not my job as a massage therapist to override those pain, pain signals. That's where injuries can happen. So that's my high horse that I've gotten on. I know a lot of massage therapists will get in there and make people cry. <laughs> I'm not one of those and I don't believe that uh, we have the training necessary. Um, I leave that sort of work to physical therapists who have a lot more training than I do. So that's just my little high horse that I get on from time to time. I apologize if, if you don't agree with me. <laughs> anyway, so to answer the question, does it hurt? It can hurt a little bit. If you don't want it to hurt at all, let your massage therapist know. Say, I just want to relax. You might find some knots, but I don't really want you to work them out. I just want to relax. So it's okay to say that. And you don't need to be macho and grin and bear it or, you know, lay there and cry into the, into the face cradle when you're face down getting a massage. <laughs> I always feel so bad when, I, when a client will tell me after the massage, oh, that really hurt. And they didn't tell me during, so I couldn't adjust my pressure. So no, the massage should not hurt unless it's in a hurt so good kind of a way. So another question I get a lot is, am I going to have to take all my clothes off? The answer to that varies. If you want certain types of massage, then yes, you'll need to take most of your clothes off. I don't think it would ever be required to take all of your clothes off. However, when you receive a massage in the United States, as far as I know, every state with licensing laws also has draping laws, we are required to keep all of your private areas covered at all times. So your genitals will never be uncovered. Your breasts, if you're a female, will not be uncovered unless you're receiving a specific type of breast massage. Your um, gluteal cleft will never be uncovered. That's your butt crack. You know, they got to use those fancy terms. <laughs> so sometimes we do have to work in that gluteal area and we'll just uncover one side at a time. So we'll fold the blanket back over one side, put that back and fold it back over the other side. So you'll never be fully exposed. So if you are just going to go have a chair massage, you don't have to take any clothes off. The chair massage is done in a seated position. You may have seen these guys at the mall with these funny looking chairs and you sit kind of on your knees and you put your head down in this funny looking, it's called a face cradle, and they'll work on your shoulders and your back a little bit and sometimes your hands. That's done fully clothed. You can also request, if you are very nervous about removing clothing, you can request that your massage even when you're having it done at a spa, be done fully clothed. You're not going to get the same kind of massage as you would if you would remove your clothing. When you take your clothing off, you, you will receive a much more flowing, um, soothing, gentle uh, massage. And when you leave your clothes on, you'll receive more of a sports type massage with a lot of compressions. Instead of these long flowing strokes, you're going to get a lot of like impressions like this because obviously we can't put lotion on top of your clothes to help glide our hands over your skin so <laughs> sorry if that little clap um, hurts your ears I apologize for that so it depends like I said on the type of massage somebody is at my door hang on oh my goodness you guys I got my yarn from webs already I only ordered it like three days ago <laughs> yay I'm not going to show it this week. I'll show it next week. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just had to share that. Okay, now back to the massage. Depending on the type of massage you want, you may or may not have to remove your clothes. However, you should rest assured that none of your private areas will be exposed. And you should never allow a massage therapist to require you to remove certain articles of clothing. Your comfort should be the number one priority. So make sure that you remember that and always remember you can ask your massage therapist to stop what he's doing or she's doing at any time. So one thing I like my clients to know is that they are in control of their session. So we have talked about, is it going to hurt? Am I going to have to take my clothes off? 
and I had another one and I'm so excited about the yarn that I can't remember what it was. Let me think a second. <laughs> My dogs are excited. I think those were the only two. If I think of it later, I'll edit it in. So sorry about that. I get all discombobulated when something out of the unexpected, when something unexpected happens. Anyway, so that's it for the training room today. If you have more questions about massage, just let me know and I'll answer them in the next episode. So let's get on to the third period and some hockey talk. Okay, it's time to drop the puck for a little bit of hockey talk in the third period here. I'm going to talk just a little bit about hockey today and then I'm going to start my Hockey 101 segment that y'all seem to have some interest in. So I'm going to begin with just the very basics of the game today. So to start it out with the hockey, as far as I know, unless something has changed in the last couple of hours since I've been recording, the NHL lockout is still on. I understand that the NHL made a new proposal to the NHLPA and I have not heard of any kind of response to that at this point. So no NHL hockey yet at this point. I kind of hope there won't be a season because it's it would be such a short season that it just wouldn't seem right. So at this point I almost wish they would cancel the season and just count their losses and start fresh next year. Hopefully they'll have this all worked out by next year. <laughs> Surely by then. The World Junior Under 20 Championships are going on in Russia right now. Those games are being broadcast live by the NHL Network, which I don't get, so I haven't gotten to see any of those games, unfortunately. But I hear it's been really good action and we almost decided to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday to watch USA versus Canada, find an online feed, but we decided in the end not to, mostly because those online feeds are typically not very good quality. My checkers are, they were doing really, really well. For the first week when I didn't podcast, they won four straight. And then the last three games they've played, they have lost. So... <laughs> <laughs> They've been very streaky. I'm not sure what the what the deal is because they play so so well and then they play like you're watching them and you're like what on earth <laughs> what happened to these guys? They're turning the puck over, they're just letting stupid things happen. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I apologize if I am a little bit maybe not as coherent as usual. Um, I've had several technical difficulties today and my voice and my mouth are tired from speaking. I've done several takes, but just to let you know, I haven't been in, into the silly juice or anything. <laughs> so hopefully my checkers will start to get a little bit more consistency going on soon. Fox and I are gonna go down to Raleigh to watch them play next Sunday, so a little less than a week from now. So excited. I haven't seen a live hockey game in about a month and a half. So that will be really fun. And they're playing in Raleigh. Usually the Checkers play in Charlotte. They're playing in Raleigh at their parent team's arena, at PNC Arena. It's just something they had planned on even before the lockout was a thing. So, um, They'll probably be the only hockey PNC Arena sees this year. So that will be a lot of fun and I look forward to reporting on that when I get back. All right, time for some Hockey 101. Sorry for the edit there, my battery died. <laughs> it's been one of those days, I'll tell you what. I think this is my third battery I've gone through today. So fortunately they are rechargeable camera batteries, so. <laughs> Wee. Okay, time for some Hockey 101. I know several of you expressed your interest in learning a little bit more about the game, so I'm going to start with the very basics today. Just with um, the players and their jobs on the ice. 
So if you go to a hockey game or watch one on television, you'll see that each team has six players on the ice at any given time, usually, and I'll explain that in, in just a minute. Each team will have one goalie, two defensemen, and three forwards. So the forwards' job mainly is to score goals, and scoring a goal is putting one of these. This is a hockey puck made of rubber. It's very hard rubber. They freeze them. They're heavy. You don't want to get hit with one, <laughs> believe me. But scoring a goal means putting one of these into the other team's net or goal. It's the same interchangeable word, net or goal. So this is a little tiny thing. And of course, each player has a hockey stick that they use to play this puck. You're not allowed to touch the puck with your hands unless you're a goalie. So there you go. So the three forwards, their main job is to put that in the other team's net. The two defensemen are there to help advance the puck to the forwards so that they can score goals and also the defenseman's job is to help the goalie keep the other team from putting that puck into their net. So the goalie, of course, is the guy with all of the pads on who stands in front of the goal to try and keep the other team from scoring. <laughs> so just a little bit of terminology for you. The three forwards, coaches typically like to put the same three guys together and that's called a forward line. Each team typically has four lines of forwards and um, sometimes if things aren't going well, if one of the lines isn't doing so well, they'll switch the players around a little bit, jumble it up, see if they can get some chemistry happening. The defensemen don't have lines. Each team typically has three sets of defensemen so three pairs of defensemen, and that's what they call them, defensive pairings. So typically, those two guys, you'll have a defensive partner. If, you're, if you are a defenseman, you'll have a defensive partner. You'll play with that guy most of the time. But sometimes, same thing happens, and they'll, they'll scramble it up a little bit. So just a little bit of terminology when you hear commentators uh, referring to lines or defensive pairings. So... That is the basics of everybody's job. So the times that you will see on the ice, excuse me, there are times that you will see fewer players on the ice than six for each team. That happens when somebody breaks the rules. If you break the rules when you're playing hockey, they will call a penalty on you and then you have to go sit in the penalty box. <laughs> You either sit there for two minutes, four minutes, or five minutes, depending on what you've done. If you do something really bad, they'll actually toss you out of the game. That's called a game misconduct. Or um, if you do something pretty bad, but not quite bad enough for a game misconduct, they'll give you a 10 minute misconduct. And then you gotta go sit in the locker room for 10 minutes, or I think you're allowed to sit in the penalty box for 10, if you want to, but most of the guys just go to the locker room. So once you have a penalty and you're sitting in the penalty box, that means that you, your team will only have five guys on the ice instead of six, <laughs> while the other team still has their full six guys. So that's why sometimes you'll look out and see one team has more players than the other. The other thing that can happen is that while I said, well, I told you there were three forwards, two defensemen, and one goalie on each team on the ice, it doesn't have to be made up that way. Um, the rule is six guys on the ice for each team. If you want to pull your goalie and put an extra skater out there, that's allowed. If you want to have three defensemen, two forwards, you can do that. Um, you can just switch it up however you want. Um, now usually you don't see variations. The only thing you see on a regular basis is that a team will pull their goalie and put an extra skater on the ice to try and score a goal. Typically that happens at the very end of a game. So hopefully that made sense for you. <laughs> if not, just ask me questions. I'd be happy to answer anything you have. 
um, either on next week's ep next week's episode or right there in the thread that I'll open on my Ravelry group. So that is it for the hockey talk today. Let's get into some post game chatter. All right, time for some post game chatter. I hope y'all have enjoyed today's episode. It's been a very long process for me today. My light is fading already. I started recording about 11 o'clock this morning. It's now almost three, I believe. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens that way. So I guess after the break, um, I just took one week off and forgot how to do everything. I suppose that's just the way that it goes. <laughs> anyway, so how was everyone's Christmas? I hope that Santa Claus was good to you. I had a wonderful, low-key, relaxing Christmas with my mom and my husband here at home. And my husband was so sweet. The um, majority of the gifts that he gave me this year were consumable gifts, which I love because I already have too much stuff. And he gave me something that I have been looking for for several years in the United States and haven't been able to find. He gave me Stroop Waffles for Christmas. Do y'all know what Stroop Waffles are? <laughs> Stroop Waffles are amazing yummy goodness. Let me show you. Watch out, here comes the crinkle monster. I'll get one of these out of here because I know otherwise you won't be able to see it. They're kind of sticky a little bit. There we go. This, my friends, yeah, I'll show you the good side. This is a Stroop Waffle. Now what this is, I believe that Paula from Knitting Pipeline um, recently discussed Stroop Waffles, so you may have heard about them from her. Stroop Waffle, two tiny little thin waffles with something gooey in the middle. It's either caramel or syrup or any such yummy thing. <laughs> now what you do with these, besides eating them, of course, is when you make a cup of tea, while your tea is steeping, you put your Stroop Waffle right over that hot tea. Or you can do it with coffee, of course, if you're willing to wait a little bit for your coffee. I know coffee doesn't steep. And you leave it on there and let the middle gooey stuff get all warm and gooey, er, <laughs> and then you eat them, and they're so good. Y'all have no idea. I believe this is a caramel one, and I just want to eat it right now, but it won't be nearly as good without letting the insides melt. So he gave me, he found them at a shop in Cincinnati called Jungle Gems. It's a huge international market. He goes to Cincinnati once a year for business, and I told him to please look for Stroop Waffles for me. The man can follow instructions. I'll give him that. He brought me back 10, 11. He brought me back 11 things of Stroop Waffles, all different varieties. He said I couldn't decide which ones to get, so I got one of everything. So I just brought a couple of them to show you here. There's one, and then he got me some kind of fancier ones in boxes. <laughs> So I am all set for Stroop Waffles for the next several months. What a wonderful treat. He also gave me some Twinings tea to drink with my Stroop Waffles. He gave me, the, actually technically it wasn't tea, he bought me herbal infusions, which is wonderful because typically I only have one cup of caffeinated tea a day and that's first thing in the morning. I like to have my PG tips with milk and sugar. And then in, through the afternoon, I'll sometimes have green tea, um, but usually I'll have herbal tea. And he bought me really fruity ones like um, strawberry mango and raspberry pomegranate and flavors like that. They're so good. Um, actually, I had some in here, but I drank it all. <laughs> I didn't even get to show you guys what I was drinking today. I was drinking the raspberry pomegranate. So good. So my husband did really well for my Christmas this year. Also, my sister was not here for Christmas, 
but when she came up to get her Christmas tree, um, I told you all about that on the last episode and showed pictures of the Christmas tree hunt. She brought this for me to put in my stocking. And it was so sweet because our grandma always got these for our stockings when we stayed at her house for, on Christmas. And as you know, I lost my grandma this year, so it was so sweet that my sister did that for me. And then I went and found them for my mom and my husband, too. So we all had these in our stockings for Christmas morning. So, yay for Christmas. So, now we come to the new year. Today is the 31st of December, 2012. So, I've been thinking about my goals for 2013. I don't really do resolutions because that never ends well. Let's face it. <laughs> So I thought I would share my goals with you for 2013 and I hope that you'll do the same and post your goals in the thread on the Ravelry group. So I just have a few, a few goals. Um, I don't want to get too crazy or anything because I like for my goals to be doable, but my first goal will be to maintain the level of fitness that I have achieved. So I need to get my little running feet back out there on the track and my next goal is to be less hermity <laughs> you're like what in the world does hermity mean <laughs> well i tend to be somewhat of a hermit i like to spend a lot of time alone and um, or just with my husband and that's fine some of us just need more downtime than others and i am one of those um, people i'm a little bit introverted and i need time to kind of process things and relax and recover before i go back out into the world but i have let myself sink too far into a comfort zone so i would like to be more proactive in being more social so at least twice a month i would like to be out doing social things with friends or trying new things that um, that include being with other people aside from just my husband <laughs> so I think that will be good for me this year and I know twice a month doesn't sound like much but if left to my own devices I would probably live right here in this room and never come out so <laughs> that's not a healthy thing to be I'm not happy when I live that way but that's kind of where you know where if I'm left alone I'll, I'll do that so um, I have a couple of crafting goals as well. I do want to crochet more this year. So I have a crocheted beanie in my queue that I'm looking forward to starting soon. And um, hopefully work on those skills a little bit. And my big knitting goal for 2013 is to knit an afghan. So I'm doing the knit along with Sarah, Apple Blossom and You. And she has a podcast called Apple Blossom and You. And I'm really excited about knitting along with her and doing an afghan. I've wanted to finish a blanket for a long time. I've had a few false starts, so hopefully this will be the year. I actually got my yarn for the blanket yesterday at Michael's. And hopefully these colors will show up because they're so pretty. It's just Red Heart Soft. And I love jewel tones, so I got... Oh yeah, those are showing up pretty good. I got these colors. So it's like a navy blue, a teal, a um, burgundy-ish color down here, in a not quite a hot pink, but a really nice pink color. So I'll talk more about that in the um, in the zone on my next episode. So. I just realized I haven't been knitting, but that's okay. I'm a little bit distracted today anyway. <laughs> so I think that's going to be it for today. I hope that you all will tell me about your New Year goals in the thread and let me know if there's any other massage things or Hockey 101 things that you would like to know about. Um, love to hear from you, always. You can contact me on Plurk as Emily3022 also on Twitter as Emily3022. I am Shanti Dragon on Ravelry. You can contact me by email. I will just put that link right here because it's not something you can really say out loud. Maybe it'll be over, I'll probably be over here actually. <laughs> 
And of course you can leave comments on my blog if you would like to. So until next time, may your projects and your favorite hockey teams stay out of the penalty box. Bye-bye.